Amen, amen. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome as we gather this morning for worship. A few announcements this morning as we begin. Our Midtown Lutheran Parish worship will be at 1030. And the parade and festivities follow for the Midtown Cultural Parade and Festival. So we're grateful that the weather is holding up. So we're grateful for the chance to celebrate with our Midtown Lutheran churches, which include Emmanuel, First, Trinity, Tabor, Salem, and Zion, and Calvary. I miss Calvary. It's about right there. So we're grateful as we gather this morning uh, for our time to worship at the Midtown Festival services at Sinisippi Band Shell uh, in the park there. So all are welcome. As we gather uh, today, a few announcements you'll see in your bulletin. There is the uh, Women of Zion Continental Fall Brunch coming up September 19th here at Zion. You're welcome to mark that down for your calendars. You'll also note that God's Work Our Hands Sunday is September 13th with a noon picnic in the uh, courtyard. All are welcome. And then we'll do some service projects uh, at and around Zion, in and Zion, and outside of Zion. You're welcome to mark your calendars for those activities. There have been some dates set for the fall, including the Rockford Area Lutheran Ministries uh, Trivia Night, which comes up in November. Our men's fall dinner will be October 29th. That's all in your upcoming events. And uh, just this week, we've confirmed that we're going to have a uh, prayer retreat on November 20th? 21st. 21st. There's a voice. November 21st, Saturday from 8.30 to 3 here at Zion. So we're lining up speakers and we'll have more information out for that um, time of retreat here at Zion. And also note that the Northern Illinois Synod Discipleship Gathering is September 17th. That'll be at Shepherd of the Valley. It's the same night as the Patriots Banquet if you're interested in going to one or the other. We gather for worship. So I invite you to please stand as we begin this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life come down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We've told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus our Savior. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away, and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen.
from the one who is and who was who and is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the first fruits of the resurrection, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, For the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, O God. and celebration, all the creation sing for The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it. 
so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 95 responsively. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. When your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Therefore, in my anger, I swore they shall not enter my rest. A reading from Romans. Therefore, Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Today's gospel is a little different today, so thank you for standing, Bernadette and Ralph. You, you know how a reconciliation happens. The word is spoken, we come and stand before God. But today as we gather at the river, as we gather at Sinisippi Park, as we gather here for worship, and we gather as a part of the Midtown Lutheran Parish, uh, we hear the second lesson talk about reconciliation. That there's more in our lives than just forgiveness. That we refuse to try to get even and we surrender that toward one another, and that God has done that need for justice, need to pay the price through the cross of Christ, that we have been not only forgiven, but reconciled, reconciled, returning of a relationship and a willingness to trust again in our relationships with God and then with one another. Today, as we gather as a Midtown Lutheran Parish, we discern and ask God, how can we continue to serve in this place, in the Midtown Parish, in the Midtown neighborhoods, in a new way, in a new season, in seven different buildings, but 
one purpose, one ministry of reconciliation, that God has reconciled us and we are called to seek reconciliation with each other. And we're just Lutherans and we know each other. Trying to work together is always a challenge, not only within a congregation, but within seven different churches. Who's doing which part of Tebe? I don't remember at Sinisipi. I, I hope it all works together. I hope it comes together with all these different pastors and parishioners trying to figure out what it means to be a worshiping community beyond just our local parish, but together in the Midtown. We are a people of reconciliation. Today we hear also about how Jesus was willing to tear down barriers, to seek, to not go around the issues of reconciliation that was needed perhaps between his own people and the Samaritans who were his own people, but they avoided them like the plague. Jesus offers a ministry of reconciliation not only for a particular woman, but a particular people. He offers an opportunity as he enters into Samaria. He doesn't go around it down the Jordan River. He doesn't avoid the subject and the implicit and explicit bias about those Samaritans. Remember the story, we love the good Samaritan? What a shock. It was a Samaritan who was nice. It was a Norwegian who was nice. Or a Swede or a German or whatever it is that we have our own biases implicitly and explicitly toward and for. Jesus was willing to risk it all, entering into a relationship with a woman who couldn't come to the well at the beginning of the day. Everybody starts their day at 6 o'clock, whatever that morning time is, and you gather and you start your day by getting water for the day. You go down to the local bar, Right? We call the bars the wells. It's all about community. In this case, this was a very social place, the well. You think about all the couples who met in the Bible at the well. You go to the well and you get your morning started, not with coffee but with water, and they carry the water back. But before they begin that laborious time, the ladies are gathering and they're talking. But there's that one woman who never comes at morning. Her isolation within her own culture, in her own town, they have pushed her out in the group still in the town, but she doesn't come in the morning. She has to come at the noon of the day when no one's watching, no one's going to be bothered, no one's going to harass her. You know, with those stories about, oh, how's Dave doing? Oh, I mean, uh, uh, Greg, oh, uh, which one are you married to now? There is no harassment, so she comes quietly, alone, seeking God's grace and mercy, the hottest part of the day, seeking Jesus. Jesus came to a Samaritan city. It was called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans, Jesus answered her. If you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty 
or have to keep coming here to draw water. Go tell your husband and come back. I have no husband. You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. I am the one who is speaking to you. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar, and she went back to the city, and she said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of this woman's testimony, He told me everything I have ever done. This woman came to the well. Like us who come into community for worship, we come to the well, we come to the place that we are strengthened, we are healed, and we come to the one who knows everything about everything we've ever done or said, or thought. We come because of life's difficulties and challenges and struggles. We come in community, not just alone. This woman comes by herself, but the passage ends at the end of John with her going back into the city. She comes back from the well, and she goes and talks to the people in her own town who know everything about her, and she makes your own public confession about this man who told me everything I've ever done. She admits in community that she perhaps reveals a lot about her life, maybe not, but this one knows everything about me. Not only did Jesus bring healing and reconciliation to this woman, But he came also to restore the whole town to one another. It says that the people came out to the well. They came to the place. Whatever that symbolized in regards to the conversations and the healing that took place for those people who Jesus knew treated this woman that way. Jesus had compassion and care for the whole town, that the whole town would be reconciled, not only to this woman, but to the Holy One that Jesus spent two more days with them. We don't know what the conversations were like, but he spent time in community for this woman and for these people because God knows how long it's been that they had not been reconciled or even as Samaritans that perhaps they didn't feel the presence of God. We gather in community knowing that God has reconciled us and also to one another. That we would be a community that continues to know and share that grace. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they urged him to stay with them. He, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. She became the first, perhaps, preacher of the gospel. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you have said. 
Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that we are called again into this well, to this well, into community, to taste and see your goodness. And to tell others of your grace and mercy. We give you thanks for your reconciling power. For the cup that is before us again. Offering us your grace and mercy in community. Guide us as we come to this well. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Please stand if you're able as we confess our faith in the Holy One through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come and be judged. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the church around the world, for the ELCA, for Bishop Eaton and Bishop Wallersheim, for Pastor Thomas and pastoral intern Chris Lee. We pray for all those in leadership in the church in the world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all creation and the waters of the world, that they may be cherished and cleansed to support our life and well-being. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace and justice in the world, for peace between nations and peace between peoples. Lord, make us examples of just living in this world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, and lonely. Especially this day, we pray for the families of Adeline Carlson, Piper Ballard, Julia Smith, and Jean Henning, as they grieve and miss their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick, especially those listed in our bulletin, Linda Callahan, Mark Schwartzlow, Vince Monty, Don Veach, Ian Ewing, Tom Johnson, Howard Lindquist, Alvin Carlson, Doug Kale, Lori Lang, Roger Schmidt, Gary Fulkerson, Bill Drilling, Alan Johnson, Barbara Nordenberg, Webbs Norman, Sue Larson, and Pastor Jane McChesney. Lord, whether we suffer in mind, body, or spirit, we know that you hold us in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Zion Lutheran Church and for Midtown Lutheran Parish. We pray for Lutherans throughout the world as we gather on Sunday mornings to offer you praise and worship that is due only to you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. always Share with one another a sign of God's peace.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth fruit, food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with all of creation, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join that unending hymn. When Jesus gathered with his friends the last time he took bread and gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together as one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome.
please stand if you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are dancing, we are dancing, oh, we are dancing in the light of the God. We are praying in the light of 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 God. We are praying. We are praying, oh, we are praying in the light of God. We are praying, we are praying, oh, we are praying in the light of God. We are singing in the light of God. We are singing in the light of God. We are We are singing in the light of God. We are singing, oh, we are singing, oh, we are singing in the light of God. We are singing, we are singing in the light of God. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Eat them